Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Kiefer, and he has, he's KJ7 LYB. He has two radios. He has an ICOM 718 and a G90. Now the G90 is a small Chinese made HF radio, it's 20 watts. The 718 is ICOM's traditional entry level rig, still sold, and it's 100 watts. Okay, now his problem is this, he's got two antennas that he uses, and uh, with both of them, he gets RFI back into the 718. In other words, the RF comes into the radio and causes the radio to do uh, unpredictable things like, uh, you know, stop, reboot, whatever. Uh, in other words, it doesn't work very well. He says he does not have that problem with the G90. Now, there uh, is a fundamental difference between the two radios and that's power. The G90 is 20 watts, the 718 is 100 watts, five times the power of the G90. So, I mean, that could be the problem right there. If you were to turn the ICOM 718 down to just 20 watts, and I suspect there is a way of doing that, you may find that your RFI problem goes away. If it does, that's the answer. G90, 20 watts. 718, 100 watts. Now, I took a look at the photographs he sent, which were just of small pieces of his antenna. One of them looked like a coil uh, being used as a loading coil, feeding some sort of aluminum radiator. And um, my first question that comes to mind is the grounding system. Um, if you're using a coil to feed an aluminum radiator, I suspect there need to be uh, radials on the ground, and I also would suggest grounding the antenna right there by driving a ground rod into the ground right at the base of the antenna and connecting that to the radials. Uh, the other thing that you can do is um, make sure that there's a ground rod right where the antenna cables enter the house. Put your lightning arresters there. Okay, and then that way the antennas are grounded and uh, can work pretty well that way. So let me just show you a couple places you can put a ground. So if you have a vertical like this, and he's got a coil here that he taps into to go to here, okay, there would be some radials out like that. This is up against the house, so there would only be radials out this way but it might be a very good idea to drive a ground rod right here and connect it to the radials okay and to the shield of the coax okay that helps this be well grounded now in addition you've got your coax going over to the point of entry into your home this is a good place to drive another ground rod right here. Okay, and then you've got uh, like the Alpha uh, Delta, it's the kind I use. Alpha Delta uh, uh, lightning surge protectors. It, they'll protect you from nearby strikes. Um, and ground the shields get grounded that way to the ground rod. And if there is a surge, electrical surge, the arc tube in here will arc over and cause that to ground too. This is one way of keeping RFI out of the shack. Now if you have a tuner, then he his coil showed a tap. You could put taps on it to get the lowest SWR and he's probably got memorized by now which tap for which band and so on. But then you've got your two radios, the G90 and the 718 and again this is a 100 watt radio try dropping that back to 20 but if you add this grounding in here there's a very good chance that uh, you're going to be able to run both radios uh, without having any RFI issues of course the radios themselves have a separate ground wire going from the station ground out to the ground rod there 
okay? That will keep much of the RFI out of your shack. So, um, Kiefer, I hope that answers your question and that uh, you'll have uh, many opportunities to enjoy both radios. So there you have it. I would like to express special thanks to Martin Crowley for becoming my most recent patron. If you would like to support this channel also, you can go to patreon.com slash ke0og and sign up for any level that you want to. So until we next meet, 73.